Okay, so the first uh, chapter that we're going to go over today is chapter five entitled The Importance of Dads. And it starts off by talking about the, how statistically boys are less likely to read for pleasure than girls are. And he attributes it to um, the lack of role models that men have or boys have in their life as far as men reading. They rarely see men reading, especially for pleasure, outside of um, necessity. And he references an, an article entitled, The Problem with Boys is Actually a Problem with Men. In it, he talks about how girls are more likely to go to college, to graduate high school, to um, score higher on tests, to do well academically. And he um, ties all of this back to that girls are more likely to read as well for pleasure. Um, so there's also a prevailing belief that boys don't like to read. That's a quote straight from page 89. And we need to encourage our boys to read more. And he talks about the difference between when a mother and a father read. So a father's going to typically read funny stories. He's going to be a little bit funnier when he talks about it. It's more enjoyable. And, he, and men typically focus more on individual experiences when they are reading, whereas women, so moms, are going to typically focus more on um, characters, character development, the plot of the story, and that type of thing. It gives an example where he says um, that when a mom reads a book about dinosaurs, they, they say, oh yeah, those dinosaurs are so cool. Look at this one. And, but a dad says, do you remember when we went to the museum and we saw how big that dinosaur really was? So they tie it typically back to personal experiences better than women do. Um, but then it also talks about how father's involvement with their children is linked to higher academic achievement. And that the more in, invested and influential a father is in their child's education, the better they're going to be. And this goes throughout saying for any socioeconomic status or any um, race, family situation, anything like that. If the father's invested, the students typically tend to do better. Um, and it also talks about the bonding time that dads can have with their children. And that if we are, if our children do not have a father in the home or if their father's not able to do something like this, we should either encourage them to FaceTime their kids if they're gone for work or call them or start a book club and write to each other about what they're learning about if they can't talk or what they're reading about. And if they don't have a father at all in the home, then we should connect them with other men that read. So find aunt or uncles, grandparents, if there's people that go to the library and volunteer to read that are men, we should encourage them to do that. Um, and then it just kind of talks about how there are so many more benefits as having um, a father read to their children and read in general. So I just thought that that was really cool and interesting because I grew up in a home where I didn't have a father at home and my parents were divorced and I rarely saw my dad and I don't remember a single time him reading to me or seeing him read for pleasure. And I've done really well academically as far as like, I was valedictorian. Um, I have like full rides to college and that type of thing because of my academic success in the past. But I just, I don't know. I think that it would be interesting to see if any of that would have been changed because of having a father in the home or if having a father read to a child or be invested in their education just means that it's going to be more important in the home and if those are um, correlated but not a causation so I don't I'm interested to see if there's research done on that type of thing to see if there's a mother in the home that's also equally invested to see if that would affect it and it's not just fathers but it's just the importance of education in the home but that's my reflection for chapter five
Um, for chapter six, it talks about print in the home, schools, and libraries. And to start off, it talks about how students need access to print at home. And if students are able to access print at home and read on their own and own their personal books, then they do significantly better in schools. And academically, test scores, um, it says, in every test subject, the more books in the home, the higher the score, often by as much as 40 points. So this means that having picture books in the home is going to increase your students' test scores in all areas, which I thought was really interesting. Um, but it also goes on to say that personal ownership of the book and students' ability to make selections were key to their improvement in reading. Um, and when they've done studies that they sent kids home with books over the summer and they were not forced to or had any accountability of reading, they improved significantly. And the disadvantaged students from a low socioeconomic status were the ones that improved the most, which I thought was very interesting. Um, but it just goes on to say that as many books as you can have in your home, you should and you should be allowing your student to read them, not forcing them, but allowing them to read whatever they want and um, just helping motivate them that way. <sighs> but it also goes on to talk about the, the obstacles and the students that are going to be the most at risk are typically the ones that are not going to have any print in the home and have less money to buy books as well because they can be expensive. Um, there's a difference between having ebooks and printed books, and they were able to find this by having um, some libraries in the past that are worrying about being shut down. They've changed to ebooks, and after a few years later, they have started getting print books back because people really appreciate printed books. Um, and then also for libraries in the classroom. Trin Trilly says that we should not limit what the students do. We shouldn't mark what grade level they are. We should not do any of that type of stuff and allow students to read whatever they want without limiting it because if it's all choice and it's about accessibility, if it's accessible and if they're choosing to read it, then we should encourage it at all times. Um, but it also says that a classroom li library belongs to the students. So we should allow them to do what they would like with the library and organize it how they'd like and set it up um, as well. And he encourages schools to give funding to teachers for personal libraries because it can be expensive, but he also gives a tribute to librarians and the importance that they have in helping select books and find research. <coughs> Pardon me. Um, and then finally, for my reflection for chapter six, I think that it's really interesting that he talks about funding for libraries because that's something that I've been thinking a lot about for a classroom library recently, because as a teacher, obviously we don't make um, a significant amount of money. And so I've been trying to find ways that I can have a classroom library for my students without spending most of the money that I earn, because some books can be expensive and continuing to do that. I've been trying to think of ways to find grants to get libraries started in classroom, in my classroom specifically, and that kind of stuff, because I would like my students to be able to have a classroom library and read what they would like, um, as well as I plan on taking my kids to the school library as long as they have one available at least once a week. So on Monday, allowing the kids to bring their old library books back and turning their new ones or yeah bring their old ones back and get new ones because if students are able to go to the library for 30 minutes of the day and select a book and if students don't want to turn their books in they can just keep them but I think that that would encourage them to find books that they would like and also motivate them to say oh I need to finish this book because we're going to the library tomorrow so those were my thoughts on that chapter thought it was really cool and we need to ensure that there's more funding for books in the home, in the classroom, and in the school and public areas as well.